I've got to say, the Leafs aren't my number one team, but as a supporter, after that first period, and really for most of the second, I felt what can only be described as a Kafka-esque dread. It looked like we were about to see Matthews fail to score in nine straight playoff games, Mitch Marner having his power sucked away through some space jam as Kai Jinx, and like 30 different individuals somehow making bad plays leading to missed opportunities. However, instead of going down in the series 2-0, the Leafs managed to string together, for the first time in a long time, three goals in a playoff game to tie the series against the Bruins 1-1. And there were two big stories going into this game. Number one, who will start for the Bruins? They have such a unique goaltending situation where both Swayman and Allmark are elite. Swayman started game one. They went to Allmark tonight. He was good. To me, like, I get not wanting to let one goalie get cold or one overexerted, but if you win game one, I think you're overthinking it to take the goalie out. The other big story was Willie Nylander, and this has been such a strange saga, but not surprising in a way. Willie is obviously dealing with something. It's the playoffs. The Leafs aren't going to say. He missed game one, but yesterday he did attend the Leafs optional practice. He was listed as a game time decision. Today we hear that he's at the morning skate ahead of game two, but he wasn't a part of any line rushes and he stayed late to practice with some of the other scratches. Brandon's theory, and I think it's a good one, migraines. He suffered with migraines in training camp before 2022. He switched to a tinted visor, which seemed to help. Maybe they're rearing their very ugly head, and if you've had migraines, you know they suck. But again, this is just complete speculation. Hopefully he's all right. Anyway, the Bruins would open the scoring after the Leafs take what can only be described as a completely dumb, just brazenly stupid penalty as Jake McCabe throws a cross check out there after the play is over. However, less than 20 seconds later, a combination of bounces and good forechecking by the Leafs would lead to a Max Domi goal. And I gotta say, the first two periods were so weird. Austin Matthews had two assists at times. I thought he was the best player on the ice positionally. But other times, especially in the greasy areas of the offensive zone, it didn't feel like he was gearing into that playoff next level. The Leafs' fourth line, however, Ryan Reeves, who had a really funny moment pregame where him and Big Rig were both sort of sneaking onto the other side of the ice, was a net positive for the entire game. Winning puck battles, fighting in front of the net, I wouldn't have been surprised if he had scored. Mitch Marner, however, just brutal. This guy disappears in the playoffs frequently, and tonight was one of his worst examples. There was an occasion he completely just did not forecheck. I don't know, like, the Leafs have to think about that when looking at his extension. Anyway, after a period where I thought they certainly kept pace with Boston, the Leafs, they let in the leafiest goal of all time. Samsonov, who's clearly trying to be very careful playing the puck, mishandles it. That leads to a rushed play, which leads to a turnover and a really good scoring attempt. Boston has the faceoff with 14 seconds left, and the Leafs just have a collapse. Pasternak loses his man as two Leafs Leafs run into each other. People were blaming Marner for Pasta getting so open. He was clearly watching the D-man. He probably should have stepped up. I mean, one of the league's best goal scorers is in the middle of the ice, but he just doesn't see it until it's too late. And Pavel Zaka, just a beautiful no-look pass. It's 2-1, and at this point, going down one right before the period, I didn't know whether the Leafs, just after such a mental collapse, had it in them to get back and tie the game, much less win it. In the second, however, I thought the Leafs recovered pretty well. First, Tyler Bertuzzi appeared to tie it on a high stick. To me, this was obviously not going to be good. I mean, he tomahawked the thing, but still on the power play, the captain JT would tie it, bringing us to the third period. Both goalies had to make good saves, but it would be the Leafs who would strike the final blow. Matthews, who had points on all three goals, would receive a beautiful pass from Domi. He'd go in all alone, and there was nothing stopping him here. That would be the game winner, and I gotta say, the difference for the Maple Leafs between being down 2 nothing and tied 1-1, purely from a mental level, much less just odds, is insane. They came back. They finally scored those three playoff goals, and Matthews broke his scoreless streak in the playoffs. But that's my thoughts on the game. Game three could go either way, but at this point, I'm actually going to give it to the Leafs. I thought they pretty badly outplayed Boston for most of the game. Boston, I'm guessing, does return to Swayman, although Olmark wasn't the problem. But we've got a lot of hockey left tonight, so I'm going to leave it here. See you guys soon. Goodbye.
Oh, by the way, the Bruins had a big PP to end the game, partially because Brad Marchand had one of the most shameless dives I've seen in some time. I actually laughed out loud. 